Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Grunnigy Games have just revealed the new Atlas that is going to be available in patch 3.20, which is going to be starting in about 1 hour and 40 minutes from the time I'm recording this video. I want to really quickly go through this and give my thoughts on what's being changed. Do note that there will be some changes that I'm going to miss. The reason for that is that GGG have put this out so late that I'm not going to be able to go very thoroughly through every single node. Instead, we're under a bit of time pressure and we're just going to have to look at categories of nodes. So firstly, we have Breach. You'll notice that the thematic changes that they've made is primarily to the things that you can block on the Atlas. So having a quick look at Breach, we've got these sections of the tree which seem to be reasonably similar to what they were in the past, except probing for weaknesses is way better. I believe that all the things that increase the chances of, of encountering the base version of Encounter are considerably better than they used to be. Zest Ula has moved, and then we have this cluster here, which is gatekeepers, which we've already had before, and the things that give you a chance to encounter various bosses. However, this is interesting. These cause any of the times that you encounter the breach bosses, this causes them to be duplicated when they show up. That's going to be reasonably dangerous if that happens. Also, it seems like there's a lot more chance to get a Chayula breach chance mod or an Ulnatol breach chance mod. So that's something that should be quite good. All in all, this cluster seems better than it used to be. Uh, we knew what Eve of Invasion was already, and we have here within their grasp is better, I believe, than it used to be. I think that's just a straight numbers buff on what it used to be. Then we have over here Power Struggle. I don't think that's any different to what it used to be. And Flash Breach is still what it's been after the nerf. So when this was around in 313 to 316, it's stronger than it is now, but it only applied to one eighth or one quarter of your maps. Now it applies to all your maps but it has been nerfed a little bit. Finally, we've got up in the top area, Otherworldly Artifacts, which I think is pretty bad, although some people are willing to give it more of a try than I am. Uh, there's fairly good small nodes there though. So maybe that's something that, wow, well, 10% increased quantity of splinters is pretty mediocre. Breach support though, looks fairly solid. It is definitely better than it was last patch. Love by the Sun is the Abyss section. So Abyss gained a whole new cluster up the top that is dedicated to pack size for Abysses. So you'll have here Reactive Swarm. Abysses in your, abyss in your map spawn 10% increased monsters for each prior pit in that Abyss. So that means that if you get an Abyss that goes to three locations, it's going to be 0% increased monsters for the first lot, 10% for the second, uh, sorry, yeah, and 20% for the third for an average of 10% more monsters. If it goes to five different locations, then it's going to be an average of 20% more monsters. And if it goes to four locations, it's going to be an average of 15% more monsters. Sustained Horde. Abysses in your maps that do not lead to an Abyssal Depths lead to at least three pits. Now that is a considerable improvement to the effectiveness of Reactive Swarm. Then we have Darkness Rising. Abyss cracks in your maps have a 5% chance to spawn all monsters as magic for each prior pit in that Abyss. And Trail of Destruction, Abysses in your maps that do not lead to an Abyssal Depths lead to at least four pits if able. So this entire cluster here is dedicated to increasing the number of maps that you find in an Abyss. The key thing you want to check with this is how it interacts with everything else that we've already got. Abyssal Army, I feel like this may have been higher in the past. The numbers on this, uh, I'm not absolutely certain. That said, Abyssal Army is still very good. 50% increased monsters and experience. I feel like it might have been 100% last league on one of the on um, XP, but no, I think it may have been 100% on the old Atlas when it only applied to a small number of maps. Uh, Votive Horde is still rubbish. Corrupted Gaze is still there and still fairly solid. And then we have the Lich side of things, which is exactly the same as it used to be. At least the large nodes are. And we have the sections down here. Uh, Inc Underground Kingdom is the same. And we've got this here, Ancient Conflict. Abyssal Troves in your maps have a 3% chance to drop an Abyssal Scarab. Uh, that's reasonably useful. And I think that's everything that we used to have for Abyss. Uh, a key thing though, this is going to be something that grants a lot of extra XP. And that's Abyss's identity here. Trade Embargo is next. And this time we are going to be looking at Expedition. So there's this cluster that we looked at before. This is increased drop drops of various things. Uh, interestingly, 4% increased chance to contain an expedition encounter is really good. So one of these small nodes is very good. Artifacts dropped by monsters is okay. Uh, vendor reroll currency, 5% is quite good. And I like taking Danig here and I like taking Rog here. 
I'm just not sure if you would also take Tujin. Uh, three points, although there's some okay stuff there. You'd also drop Rog if you're not interested in doing a lot of Rog. Then the there's certainly a lot of merit to just going with Danig and Tujin. The small nodes are pretty good. Here we have Buried Knowledge. I think that's exactly the same as it used to be. 50% quantity of Expedition Logbooks is the big deal there, but also additional Runic Monster Markers. That's just a really strong node. And also these small nodes are much better than they used to be. So 4% chance to contain an Expedition Encounter. That is miles higher than it used to be. Expedition down here, plus two remnants and 30% have an additional suffix. I think that's unchanged. Distinguished Demolitionist, very, very good node and still seems to be unchanged. Downwards, we've got a couple more. We've got Expedition here. Um, Expedition monsters in your map spawn with 20% of their life missing. I don't think this is very good, but this cluster is here if you are just really struggling with Expedition encounters and it does have its niche use if you're playing DOT builds in particular that have low damage and that propagate explosions. Uh, this will make things a lot easier. Hunt for Answers, just much better numerically than it used to be as well. So there's a lot of stuff in there that's uh, better than it used to be for just increasing the chances of getting an expedition encounter. Uh, next we have the Sacred Grove. So harvest section, we've got bumper crop unchanged, bountiful harvest is unchanged, uh, we have Call of the Grove is massively buffed, plus 15% chance to contain the Sacred Grove. So that's miles better than it used to be. And that was a cluster you used to take as well. Life Force uh, has 10% chance to be duplicated. I think that's unchanged from last league. That's interesting. Harvest crops have a 25% chance to reduce chance to grow purple plants, yellow plants, or blue plants. Uh, yellow plants are objectively the best of these, and I do think that if you're going to be running a bunch of harvest, you probably want to take everything here except for the yellow ones. Uh, that said, you could just... Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, sh you should take all of them because the in the past, yellow and red were both good, but now that the Fracture Craft has been removed from red, that means that yellow is looking even better than it was. So yellow life force is just better. If you're wanting to run harvest, you, you probably want to take all of the purple and all of the blue sections there in order to remove those, reduce the chances of getting them, and therefore bias yourself heavily towards getting yellow plants. Uh, doubling season we already covered. We have um, Heart of the Grove here, 60% increased chance to contain a tier four plant. Can't remember if that's the numbers it used to be. And 10% chance for the unchosen crop not to wilt is good. Is that the extent of the new harvest stuff? Yeah, it looks like it is. Uh, that is pretty strong though. I will say that that is looking pretty solid. Sealed Domain uh, is the Legion one. So we'll bring up the Legion content next. And oh, what's the Legion look like again? It's uh, been so long since I spec Legion that I've just got to remember what the icon looks like on the passive tree. So let's start here. Face off is the same. War supplies looks the same. Constant battle is 10% chance to contain a Legion encounter, and you definitely want to take Maraketh Legion chance and probably Templar Legion chance as well. That then inherently biases against getting the more common ones, and those are pretty solid choices. Legion chests in your maps contain an additional random reward. It feels like it'll be fairly solid. Uh, logistical support. Legion monsters in your maps which grant rewards have 10% chance to gain two additional rewards, and if not, have 20% chance to gain one additional reward. Um, Legion monsters in your map have 50% more life for each additional reward they have. This is something that you only take when your character is really strong, but that is actually a pretty strong cluster there. So that's um, some solid support there. Emblematic is still the same. Um, and there's also some small nodes that support it. Kind of feel like you might take that entire cluster, like all of the wheel. Not just the um, not just the the big nodes, and then we have down here the Legion chance section, ten percent chance to contain a Legion encounter, and four percent on the small ones, which is quite a bit better than it used to be. So the Legion support there is tied up in those nodes, just giving much more chance to encounter a Legion, kind of like you're always playing with a with a rusted scarab. Heist has a number of interesting things that are being added here in terms of additional support for it. So here's the heist stuff. Unfortunately, heist and beyond look very similar and Rachel as well for that matter. So the dutiful soldier, Huck accompanies you upon a, a, upon opening the first smuggler's cache in each of your maps. This is surprisingly good because Huck has 20% XP buff, 
He also provides a bunch of combat buffs. I think this could be quite good, but it is very, very niche. And it, it's something that would be very good if Heist was on the map device. Heist isn't on the map device, and as a result, I think this is a lot weaker than it could be. If this was around in 319, this would have been fantastic. Next, we have the Secret Stash, 12% chance to contain a smuggler's cache. That is really good. That is a big upgrade. And the small nodes are 4% as well. So you take this whole cluster, that's 28% to contain a smuggler's cache. That is actually starting to get your chance up to be good enough. The dutiful soldier looks pretty good. Do note that if there is exactly one smuggler's cache in your map, you're not going to find it until on average halfway through the map. And that's going to decrease the value of dutiful soldier. But having Huck along for the map boss will make the bosses easier. One thing that needs to be determined is whether Huck brings the benefits from his gear along with him. If he does, then if he does, then the um, aura, the level level five haste aura or higher than level five is going to be really strong. And there's also a few other auras that he can get, and that's based on the weapon weapon equipment that he's got. This cluster gives you some ability to control which contracts drop. So it'll increase the quantity of contracts that drop in your maps. Then you have 100% more likely to get lockpicking, brute force, or perception. Then the second one is demolition, counter thaumaturgy, or trap disarmament. I think this is going to be one of the least taken nodes on the entire atlas. And then we have agility, deception, or engineering. Now deception is arguably the very best of the uh, contracts. That's the ones that give you a lot of stack decks. Uh, also that facilitates having Gianna no matter what level the contract is and also has just a bunch of other things going for it. They tend to be the fastest to run as well. So that's deception. Agility is reasonable. Engineering is pretty bad. And this cluster is reasonable though. I could see myself taking it if I wanted to run a lot of heists this league. Um, here we've got this heist cluster with um, friends in high places. Heist contracts found in your maps are more likely to target high value and precious targets. This means you'll get a lot, 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 lot more uh, rogue markers for completing heists. 100% more likely to, to require high level jobs is interesting. So you can pick between the three of these. Uh, the reason you would want these to be high is that it seems that you get a 5% chance for your reward rooms inside a contract to be duplicated for each of the levels above, uh, for each level above one that's required to run it. So in other words, a reward room has an average of one, have one chest if it's minimum level one for the jobs. It has an average of 1.05 if it's minimum level two, 1.1 for three, 1.15 for four, and 1.2 for five. Based on that, I actually think you might want to take level five chance and level four chance will pay off. I think the level three chance is paying off much less, but early on, you're going to want to take level three chance because you won't yet have level five rogues. That's an interesting little cluster there. Uh, you also have an extra chance to get a smuggler's cache, which is really nice to see as well. Uh, next, we have the North Heist Cluster, which used to be the one that granted you bounty packs. Here you have the chance to get six additional smuggle caches, but this is only in maps that already contain at least one, and you can't force one anymore. Smuggler's caches also cascade, so that the first one makes the second one better. And your areas that contain smugglers caches have a chance to contain additional ones. I think that this is probably the weakest cluster here at the moment, but this is going to be very, very good in the future when Heist is back on the map device. Looking down here, we've got um, blueprint chance, blueprint chance, blueprint chance, and then of course the most important blueprint node, which is blueprints that drop in your maps, have a 10% chance to be fully revealed. Smugglers caches have 100% increased chance to drop blueprints. Note that that is a relative increased chance, so that means that it goes from a what's believed to be 8% to what's believed to be 16%. Okay, so that is the high section. Let's jump to Metamorph now, and Metamorph is going to have a number of things on it that people have been talking about. Uh, Intrinsic Darkness is just more chance to get a Metamorph. Uh, it's a much better cluster than it used to be. Here we have Wealth of Knowledge. Metamorphs in, in your maps have an additional random modifier to dropped items. That could be really, that sounds like it's one of the conversion mods. Uh, I know that the conversion mods aren't always positive, at least in at least in 319 they weren't, but that's something to keep an eye on. This could be very good, but we don't know yet. 250% increased quantity of items dropped by metamorphs in your maps for each monster modifier on them. Now, I believe quantity is not so hot on these because they already have a lot of it. 
And I think that that is just an extra 0.4 items. Base quantity is, is 0.16 items per monster. And then the Metamorph might already have 10,000% increased quantity. And going from 10,000% to 10,250% is just going from 16 items to 16.4 items on average. But the increased rarity is a bigger deal. And that may be something that's interesting, especially with this random modifier to dropped items. I am very curious to see what happens here. Monsters in your maps that drop metamorph organs have a chance to upgrade their rarity is interesting. So this means that you could have a magic monster upgrade to a rare, which is less important, but a rare monster upgrading to a unique could be very interesting because it could give you more or more capacity to target farm eyes, which tend to be the limiting factor when it comes to metamorphs. Metamorph vat meters are easy to fill is not very good in general but is just something that's worth keeping in mind as an option if you're running low tier metamorphs. In high tier maps, you will almost certainly fill a vat anyway. And then here we've got this uh, chances to gain metamorph scarabs for killing a metamorph is interesting and increased XP per 10% of vat filled. Uh, increased XP is often a bit of a trap on a single monster, uh, but we'll have to have a look at it. It may end up being better than it looks. Okay, organ donor is the same as it used to be and replicated results is the same as it used to be. And do we have any more support for Metamorph on the tree? Yes, we do, we do, we do. We have Escaped Experiment, oh, the Rogue Metamorphs. This is how you get yourself killed in hardcore. Uh, rogue Metamorphs are some of the most deadly encounters around. And we have Catalyzing Fluids. 10% chance to drop an additional catalyst for each magic monster sample used on them, and more for higher tier ones. 50% chance to drop an additional catalyst for each unique monster sample on them, is going to be really good in the context of things like the city square farming. And I think that this may make city square farming of metamorphs one of the best places in the game to get yourself metal, uh, metamorph catalysts, which is good because it shouldn't be heist as the best place to get them. And then we have here the fine specimens. Uh, metamorphs in your maps deal more damage, have more life, and have a chance for their rewards to be doubled. And Imperfect Anatomy is reduced magnitude of damage granted to metamorphs from vat fill in your maps. And uh, so this nerfs the metamorphs themselves. Metamorphs in your maps have reduced action speed. And then there's the various uh, loot changes here. So this cluster is basically choose whether you want more risk or more reward. Oh, sorry, choose whether you want more risk and more reward or whether you want to just invest points in making the encounters more accessible. And overall, metamorph is looking a bit better than it was in the past as well. Next, we have ominous silence for delirium. So delirium clusters, we have this one down here, which is that which you seek. 10% chance to contain a mirror of delirium is just miles higher numbers than it used to be. The whole, the whole kit and caboodle is now 22%. That is a lot, lot, lot. Uh, here we have the singular eternity, I think is unchanged. Descend into madness is unchanged, I believe. Uh, we have the pathological cluster is unchanged. Uh, this is better than it looks. Oh, the small nodes have been improved. So the small nodes here are better, which makes pathological a much lower opportunity cost. And so pathological is now better than it's been in the past because of that. Uh, here we've got paranoid fixation. This one I was less impressed with, uh, although people have pointed out since I made my initial discussions on it, that this does have a significant utility. And that is that it means you can get item level 84 and 85 cluster jewels in maps, which is something that you otherwise can't get. So that's something that's particularly impressive there. So maybe that's a utility that's going to matter here for, for the Paranoid Fixation Cluster. Otherwise, I don't think it's particularly good, although the interaction with Torment Scarabs is fun and will make things a little bit better than it used to be. Speaking of, um, speaking of the things that are happening with your... Um, Sorry, speaking of things that are happening with scarabs, there is growing hordes has been added to the tree. This causes your scarabs to do different things to what they normally do. And if you're using quad rusted scarabs that are bad ones, so you're using the very worst of the rusted scarabs, you can get 20% pack size, but this comes at the cost of not being able to use your scarabs normally. That node is really strong. Uh, did we miss anything there? Oh no, that's the, um, that was the Labyrinth Cluster that just looks vaguely like the Metamorph Cluster in terms of its colour being the same. Uh, next we have the section for the uh, Blight content. So Blight has a number of things that we're changing around. We have here Spores on the Wind. 
uh, 3% chance of her maps to contain the Blight enchantment. That is pretty weak, and that is definitely not something to write home about. Uh, immune response is still unchanged, I believe. I don't think those numbers are any different to that in the past. Your maps with Blight Encounters have a 20% chance to spawn an additional Blight Encounter. This, I think, is just that same concept of doubling up on things. Uh, these mechanics are better if you've got a Scarab or you can force them onto your map by some means. I think this is unchanged. Um, then we have here Fungal Bloom, 10% chance to contain a Blight Encounter. This cluster is just miles better than it was. Uh, it does the same thing it used to do. It just has more of the numbers that it used to have. Sturdy Construction is the thing that you would take early on if you want to make Blights a little bit easier. This is something you'll get rid of as soon as your character is strong enough that you don't need it anymore. Uh, Distilled Fungus is, I think this is unchanged. Blight Bosses drop an additional anointed item. And then we have the Blight Spawn is the Oil Extractor. Ah, these are the small nodes that cause you to have... No, wait. Oh, this is the one. Blight Bosses have an additional reward. This is the one that was teased. Distilled Fungus is still there. I think that's unchanged from what it used to be. Uh, although it does have a lot of synergy with these small nodes. And then we have this cluster here, Blight Spawn, uh, which has the oil extractors and oils found in maps have a 25% chance to be one tier higher. Uh, because of the three for one recipe generally being good, 25% chance to be one tier higher is pretty much a 50% more multiplier to the amount of oils that you get. Uh, so in, you'll get, if you were going to get opalescent oils, if you were going to get four of them, you will instead get three opalescent and one silver. And a silver is roughly equal to three opalescent oils. The only exception here is that silver upgrading to gold is generally not a tripling in value. Uh, it's less than a tripling. Okay, so that's the Blight section. Now we have Secular Focus for Ritual. So let's have a quick look through at the Ritual support that exists. 15% chance to contain Ritual Altars is just miles higher than it used to be again. And then we've got this cluster here, which has got, uh, again, this has just been numerically improved. 15% chance to drop a Blood-Filled Vessel when you finish a Ritual-oriented map. Then we have this cluster, which is going to give you Ritual Altars allow re-rolling favors twice more and re-rolling favors is cheaper. I think that's unchanged. Uh, this, this cluster here, uh, deferring favors is cheaper than it used to be. And also the things show up a little bit quicker than they otherwise would. That's going to be a pretty solid one to take, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, I feel like with Ritual, a fair amount of the value that you get is tied up in the very good drops and being less likely to miss out on a good drop and also more likely to be able to see them in a reasonable time frame is definitely a big improvement. A cult devotion is unchanged and really actually ritual has been buffed less than a lot of the other stuff. The next thing that needs to be talked about quickly is the bossing support that's on the passive tree. Uh, you'll notice that height of hubris and simultaneous release for the Maven witnesses, Maven witnessed invitations is gone. This is going to have two effects. Firstly, if you are someone who is a top-end power gamer, this is going to be quite a nerf to you. Secondly, if you're someone who is much more casual, then this is going to be a buff to you. The reason there is that it's going to cause things like Maven Splinters to be a bit more expensive because the top-end power gamer is not going to be able to farm as many of them. And that's going to mean that when you run them, you're going to get the same loot as someone that's a top-end power gamer rather than being feel rather than feeling like your best use of something like a shaper guardian set is to sell it to someone that can run it with those simultaneous release and the double effect of all of the um double effect of all of the mods on it so that's been changed and i think that it'll be depending where you are in progression uh if you're the sort of person that kills uber elder on day three then this is a nerf if you're the sort of player that kills uber elder sort of limps over the line on day 28 of the league then this is going to be a buff for you. Uh, then there's the Synthesis Cluster, and this is quite a bit worse uh, than it used to be. There's no more doubling of mods here, which means that Synthesis will be less of a... less punishing of certain builds, because some builds couldn't do the doubled mods at all, and were reliant upon using Wandering Path. That's entirely gone. Uh, Memento Mori, of course, is still there. The Shaper and Elder section is uh, now has Remnants of the Past be a little bit more accessible from memory. I think that might have been a bit higher than it is now, although maybe I'm remembering the 317 incarnation of the Atlas there. And then there's the Searing Exarch stuff. I don't think the Exarch and the Eater have been changed in any significant way. Uh, doesn't feel like it. Maybe it has, uh, but 
I don't think that there's any significant changes other than, of course, Wrath of the Cosmos being redesigned and Eldritch Gaze being redesigned somewhat. Uh, these have definitely been toned down from their ridiculous uh, both extreme risk and extreme reward in 318, but they are going to be still very worth taking if you want to focus on that content. Otherwise, there's going to be a bunch of small stuff that I'm going to miss because this is a first look and we don't have enough time to go through everything or even to fully edit this video, but I'm going to get it up there and may your Valobs have interesting results. I will see you around.